Shaman. What's, what's, what's going on, YouTube? Washington. This is what, 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 What's going on, YouTube? This is your boy Jamar before here once again. I'm gonna say, I'm gonna tell y'all like this. <laughs> I'm gonna do this entire review with my bonnet on. Mm -hmm. It's seven o'clock. I know it's seven o'clock. It's seven o'clock a.m. Okay. Why am I doing this at seven o'clock a.m.? <laughs> Better late than never. Um. So I just watched the episode actually. And as soon as I cut this camera off, I'm going to sleep. So I decided to get halfway there. <laughs> um, but this this episode, it it really was and has been really since the season started, the Judy show. I was kind of hoping it wouldn't be the Judy show because it was the Judy show all pretty much all through season seven and the first half of All Star Battle One that I actually watched. Uh, so yeah, I. Mm -mm. So anyway, we're going to proceed with the Judy show. So it starts off with Judy, 4 o'clock in the morning, sitting around, I think that was the grill or the outside kitchen or whatever they call that, saying, talking to shit, talking to appliances, talking to uh, refrigerators, talking to the oven, talking to the toaster, you know, talking to all these sort of inanimate objects, okay? And it's just the same thing we've seen before. We're no longer shocked. We're no longer really surprised to see Judy talking to plants, rocks, and berries. It's no longer a thing, so. <laughs> anyway, so the life coach decides to come back, or the life coach. Do I want to say that? I don't know what it is about this life coach, but it just seems like I could do her job. I don't <laughs> cuz the way she coaches, it's like it's like the way I give advice to my friends, but it's usually more direct. It's like I put if from what I when I give advice to like my friends and they ask me, you know, what do you think about a, a situation that they're going through? If I can clearly see what the problem is, I'll probably put it right in front of them, address what it is, and then let them deal with it from there. It's like, even though, you know, Laura kind of, you know, puts sugar on it and kind of makes it seem nice and all this other stuff. And I just like, girl, I mean, it's working, I guess, for what it's worth. But sometimes I just get a little frustrated with her technique. But that's neither here nor there. It, it, it works. If it works for them, that's all that matters. So Jada comes in, she talks about how she, uh, something about her father saying that she loves him and she's like, well, you know, I take it that he loves me, you know, I know he loves me, but I don't really, it doesn't really resonate with me or something like that. Move right along to Julie. Julie says she lives with her boyfriend, but what the hell did she say? Because child, I was going in and out with this part. I was like, child, this, this life coach stuff. Uh, what the hell did Judy, Julie say? I know she said she was living with her boyfriend. And uh, something about, oh, she always puts up a wall. And, she, you know, when she's done with somebody, she's done. She, she wants to work on second chances. Okay, cool. And here comes Judy go crazy ass. <laughs> and she asked him, do you think you're crazy? And she was like. <laughs> I don't dislike Judy, but I'm just. I agree. Later on, Natalie made a comment like this whole act of being this thing. I mean, it may not even be an act, but you just being this way is old. And I'm just kind of like, I don't, I don't feel it anymore. I don't, I'm just like, I don't really, oh, child. Anywho. So she's talking about, she was start off crying. I'm like, okay, this is, this is getting somewhere. But then she starts laughing. And then she starts to talk about how there's another personality. And then in the same breath talks about, I'm a demon. Girl, I that life coach, I would have been like. <laughs> the power of Christ compels you, girl. I, I ain't with that. And then Natalie comes in to talk about how she doesn't give a fuck about people's feelings and she wants to work on that and blah, 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 blah. 
Laura the life coach pretty much thought that a lot of what Natalie said was bullshit, and then it probably was bullshit. So, <laughs> um, but while Natalie is doing her thing with the life coach, here go Camila. I don't, I just do not understand Camila right now. And you know what? This is like the same Camila that I saw in All Star Battle season two when she was all huff and puff all the time with uh, uh, Elise. And now she's talking, she's calling Sarah and Jada uh, Natalie's minions, and now she's gonna fall, she's gonna uh, follow behind Natalie and da 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 and talk about how she's a follower. And Sarah's like, no, I'm not a follower. I've known Natalie for five years. Like, she's my actual friend. And Camila's like, oh, she's a follower. It's just so annoying. My question to you, Camila, is why do you give a fuck? I mean, honestly, they're not really doing nothing to you. They mind if they are together, they mind in their own business. So why does it bother you so much? Who follows who? If it's not, if they're not fucking with you or your belongings, I don't understand her frustration with why Sarah, uh, even if, if Sarah is friends or close with Natalie, I, it just seems like either you just have a, a personal vendetta against Natalie, and anything that is with her, you have a problem with. Or you're just jealous because mm, mm, Sarah and Natalie are kind of more so fan favorites than Camila is. Camila's fan favorite them, I think, peaked at right after her season. And it's like once she started going into All Star Battle and especially up until now, it just kinda declined. Uh, at least for me it has. I don't I don't know if you guys can agree, because I used to love Camila back in the day, but once she got on All-Star Battle, I was, mm, I just started to get more and more annoyed, and then when she came back on this, I was like, okay, maybe she gonna do, maybe she gonna be, you know, the kind of person that I wanted her, that you know, she was on her season, and made me like her, but, yeah, lo and behold, <laughs> So, I'm just like, I don't understand that. But anyways, Camila goes into the uh, the life coach and she talks about how she uh, always feels like she has to get, quali not qualifications, what am, what, what am I looking for? Approval from her mother. Like, her mother always taught her, like, she was a little baby doll and this and she was perfect and this, that, and the fourth. But she always felt like she uh, never was good enough. And... The Lord of the Life Coach says, you know, if, if you're always seeking validation from your mother, you're going to always seek that validation from men, women, other people. And that's definitely true because when you always seek validation from other people, it's almost like you don't have any self-worth for yourself. Like, you don't think you yourself are enough. And it's it's you're really never going to get, I don't think, the validation that you think you're going to get from anyone, honestly. Um because nobody is ever going to care about you or believe in you more than you do. Uh, truth be told, if you don't believe you can do it, then why should anybody else, you know? Uh, so Sarah comes in, and this is, you know, I felt like, I felt really bad for Sarah because, you know, Sarah <clears throat> has always been this confident person and has always put forth this uh, air of, you know, she has it all, you know, together. But, you know, she always says she overly trusts people, and it's not like, well, I guess Laura the Life Coach pretty much kind of fine-tuned it in a way. Uh, it's, it's not so much that she trusts people, but it's that she allows people to treat her badly. It's just, and it's like, she, when somebody does something to her, she acknowledges it, but if they just apologize, then she takes it and just forgets about it. And I don't know if that's either trust or treating badly. I'm, I think it's like a fine middle i'm not sure but it's it falls into both of those categories because it's a way she's trusting that they're actually sorry and she's actually allowing them to treat them badly by probably lying to her so uh, she has to uh take care well she's had to tell i don't think if it's current but she used to take care of her dad for like two years she used to live with her and Laura the Life Coach asked her, like, why is your father living with you when it should, if anything, be the other way around? And he, she was like, you know, he can't really keep a job. He had nowhere else to go. And she was like, okay, if you're taking care of your dad, like, who's helping taking care of you? She was like, myself. And she's like, nobody else? Like, my dog. And, you know, she started to get really emotional because it's it's not ever 
going to be, you're never going to be completely okay if you're the only one who everybody else has to lean on, uh, but you don't have anybody, you know, to lean on and to help take care of you. So it, I can understand, like, her frustration and how that can, you know, get in the way. Like, that sucks. <laughs> like, if you always have to be there for other people, but when you're having an issue or you're going through something, there's nobody there for you, which sucks. So I, I felt for Sarah in that particular moment. So Judy and Julie have one of their many talks this episode, one-on-one. -on -one. And, you know, Julie tries to say, you know, hey, you know, what you did last night, you know, at the club, say, you know, talking to people crazy and whatnot was not cool. And Judy was at first, she was like, OK, I'm sorry. But then she started to be like, hey, uh, I want to go to the doctor and get a nose job. And, Ju and Ju Julie's like, what, what the fuck does that have to do with what the fuck we're talking about, bitch? And was just confused. Like, as soon as I would be, too, I'd be like, uh-uh, I ain't got the time. Uh, Rocky talks to the live coach about her stepdad passing and how she's not over that. Uh, Danny talks about, you know, how dealing with men like her, the two, the last two guys she was with or was dealing with, she led into her life and they shit on her, as she put. Uh, I don't know if that's figuratively or literally. Just saying. Butter them up. Yeah, and then one, I guess the last guy that she was with, uh, she said she was pregnant and she miscarried or she lost it. And y'all knew. Well, maybe y'all y'all may not have known for real, for real, as it was happening back in her season. But I wanted to set those twins on fire. Okay, that was how badly I could. I couldn't wait. I literally... As much, I watched every episode of the season, but I could not wait until that season was fucking over. Because I did not want to look at their asses no more. But I didn't want to miss each of, this, each of the episodes either. I didn't want to see how shit was going in. So, long story short, I did not like this bitch. And this is probably the only moment that I can recall where I actually felt something other than disgust about these, these any of these any either one of these twins and, you know because i ain't gone you know i may not like you bitch but you know you and uh you know dealings with the heart and children all that you know those are all sensitive subjects so i i'm not gonna come at you like that bitch for that i, I can't do it you know and my morals do not allow so <laughs> you know i i felt you know, especially because of the whole uh dealing with men thing and people and you letting them in and them fucking you over it's like I go through the same thing and so I understand that that can really build really bad trust issues <sighs> still working on that so I'm, I'm feeling you right now Danny as of right now I'm feeling you through this whole ordeal especially since last week when Judy told Danny uh uh, I got so much flack for being you and Julie's friend, like, bitch, then don't even fucking be my friend then. If you feel like you're doing me a favor by being my friend, don't do it. So I've been, I fucked with, I'm fucking with Danny as of thus far. I do not trust that this will continue very long, but <laughs> right now I'm fucking with her. Uh, where are we at? Where are we at? So... Rocky tries to talk to Judy, and she's trying to give her some real shit. Like, she's upset because she cares a lot about Judy, and she's one of her favorites. And she brings, as Rocky is sitting here trying to be genuine with this bitch, she comes up and brings up this plastic surgery again, talking about her nose and something about her ass cheeks and her closure of her weave. I'm, mm, I think I just would have to leave her alone because she would be really, she would have pissed me off if I'm sitting there trying to talk to you and you give me some bullshit. Um... Now, this is where everybody pretty much has, is everybody against Natalie. And I'm really confused by Natalie, too. Natalie, one minute, is saying, we got to get this bitch out, get this bitch out. Pours wine, liquor, whiskey, piss, anything, everything into this, this woman's cup and gives it to her to try to make her act crazy. And then again, turns right back around. And says, hey, you know, nobody else, why are these people your real friends? They're not, they're letting you walk around here with no hair, no, no, 
you know, nails, no, your hair looking a mess, this, that, and the fourth. So I'm going to take you under my wing and help you and do this and that for you. And me and the rest of the world and the girls in the house looking like, the fuck? You just, as they was going from the club that they went to, was talking about how we need to get this bitch out, her act is so old, da 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 And then you want to turn around and be like, hang with me and Sarah and let me take you under my wing? Hmm? I don't understand that. I really, mm -mm, I don't get it. And Red is bringing this information to, you know, Julie and Danny and whatnot. And Julie's like, look, I may not fuck with Judy right now. I may not be on the best of terms. But if anybody fucks with her, I'm going to be pissed off. And that's pretty much how friendships and just relationships in general should be. Like, we're not always going to be on the best terms. We're not always going to agree. But there should be a certain level of love and respect there for if anybody else outside of our situation, even though we're going through something, if anybody else outside of that tries to fuck with you, it should be me that should come and try to come at your defense or, you know, assist you and be, a, uh, you know, help you out in some sort of way just because I may not be happy with you right now, but that doesn't mean I don't still care about you, you know? So that's how Julie feels towards the whole Judy situation, so... They go to this whole art thing and they dress, they draw this white lady and this black dude with a small penis. And yeah, it, he was funny looking to me. I was, I was thinking they were going to get somebody a little bit more fine, but you know, oxygen budgets are low these days from what I hear. But anyway, we're going to move forward. <laughs> and Judy, everybody else can see pretty much what Natalie's doing. But Judy is just like, no, she's not a bad person. But, you know, Julie and that, and I'm not even going to group Sarah into this. Only because I don't put Sarah, I don't think, well, mm. Sarah did kind of co-sign the whole liquor, wine combo thing. Her and Jada. I don't know what that was about. But I'm trying not to really lump her in just yet. But Judy is kind of being blind and... Uh, and like Danny said, delusional to what Natalie is doing. Like, she's just trying to make herself probably look better by taking care of the wounded soldier. Because she knows that uh, Judy pretty much worships Natalie and wants to be close to her. And it's just a sad situation. It's, it's honestly just a really sad situation. So, Camila decides to confront Natalie about, you know, what she's doing with Judy and Natalie's in the confessional talking about some, why does everybody have a problem with what I'm doing? Like, y'all didn't, why y'all all of a sudden give a fuck about Judy? Like, y'all was letting her walk around looking a fool and this, that, and the four. But still, you really don't care about, you still really don't care about her because you're sitting still talking shit, wanting her to get out the fucking house. So you don't care either. I don't know. That's why we're all confused as to why you're doing this whole act about you giving a fuck about Judy. Like, girl, I have several seats. And then Red, of course, confronts her. Red's been confronting everybody on some real shit this, uh, this season so far. So I'm digging Red as of right now. And Red confronts her. And they, the security and break, break Red and Natalie up. And this bitch says, talk to my motherfucking fat rolls. And rolled up her shirt. I was like, Lord. <laughs> there was a lot going on back there, girl. But yes, that's pretty much how the episode... Wait, no, no, it's not. No, it's not. The episode ended when Natalie was on the phone talking to her husband. And <laughs> she uh, she was telling him about, I guess, what was going on in the house and, you know, her and Judy and whatever and whatnot. And here comes Red. And whatever, I guess, I forget what it was that Natalie said, but Red was like, that's a motherfucking lie. And she just sat in the room and she said, if you tell another lie, I'm hanging up the phone. And, you know, Natalie was like, you know, I'd like to kindly ask you to leave out into the other room. And Red was like. <laughs> and just sat there perched. So Natalie's like, okay, well, I'm just going to continue on with the motherfucking conversation and blah, blah, blah. And apparently, I don't know what else is what she said. I think while she was having the rest of her conversation, she was talking about how Red was doing this, that, and the fourth and, and being whatever. And Red just hung up the motherfucking phone. Now, she said something about, according to everybody else, you know, I'm this bad person. And then Red hung up the phone and was like, Choo! 
She's like, it's not in accordance to everybody else. It's the motherfucking truth. And and then Natalie used the phone to knock Red's drink over. And was like, what you're not going to do is you're not going to be disrespectful. You're this, you're that, you're all that and motherfucking bag of chips. And da 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 And they just started getting into this big heated argument and such. <laughs> and it's it's kind of it's kind of interesting. I'm not really on anyone's side necessarily. Like as far as like one sided, I've heard that the house is divided between Judy, Sarah, and Natalie, and everybody else. <laughs> that's what that's what I've heard the whole season is about. But um. That's how this episode ended, y'all. I hope you guys enjoyed watching this particular video. I'm about to go to sleep. You hear me? Sleep. <laughs> but I want to make sure I get this video recorded. So make sure you guys like, comment, and subscribe to the videos. And I'll see you guys next time. Bye-bye. Like, share, subscribe.